today we're going to be doing another project with carbon fiber. So I found, I think, a TIE fighter from Star Wars, and I found some other ones also. Like This is just going to be a quick test run to see if we can actually do this with carbon fiber. And if we can, then this is a precursor to a lot of other cool things. So, so far the one millimeter drill pro is handling just fine. I've had bad experience with one millimeter where it just breaks like not even two minutes in or sometimes just as soon as it goes in it breaks. So I've increased the speed just in case and I've also lowered the plunge rate and the feed rate which we'll take a look towards the end of the video. All right guys, so I'm actually pretty excited now. This came out really, really nice. It's really beautiful. So what happened here is I increased the speed and dropped the uh, feed rate and it cut absolutely perfect. Well, I mean, so far this is the first one and um, it is really nice. You can see every single pass. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue. Um, I've also figured something out we're gonna try right now is that I keep the pump in the water and I keep it pumping towards the cutter and it keeps the water circulating and pushing away the carbon uh, dust so we can actually see what's constantly going on. All right guys, so here it is. How did it come out? How did everything go? Well, there's a lot of things that went on different this time. And the reason why I decided to tackle this project is because it's really awesome. It's basically, you know, the laser engraving files. However, I took it, modified it, and got it to run on a CNC machine. Now let's talk about a couple things that are really important. The plunge rates, feed rates, and the RPM that I was using it. So I did go ahead and grab my Drill Pro set again. I'm gonna keep using this until it goes out. So I finally figured out the best settings to run these on, actually. It's really nice. I actually didn't go too aggressive this time. And as you can tell, it looks really nice. That little line right there that you usually also see in carbon fiber frames, this is where I had a tab and that's where I removed it. I filed it away and you can see the tab here. That's where I set up a tab. And on this side, I set up two tabs. See, as you can tell right there. So you can kind of see the tabs where I filed them. But look at the middle parts. I did not touch this. And you can see every single layer right there. So what I did was I did a couple passes. I did 0.4 millimeters for each pass. And for the tab, what I've set was 0.5 millimeters in length and 0.5 millimeters in height to keep holding it on the bottom. So when I come in, I just pop it off. Now, this didn't work out so great on all the parts because there were some parts that actually ripped some of the threads um, out. So let's take a closer look here. Uh, this is super glue right there. So I'm just gonna show you something. I found some other files, but I didn't wanna go too crazy with it just yet. So for example here, I left you some tabs so you can see as well. These inside right here, these were some of the tabs. I didn't file down so you could see, but I really wanted to see how this came out. And as you can tell, it is really smooth. This is some of the best cuts I've ever made period ever, which is really nice. Uh, the tabs did kind of screw up some of the cuts. Yeah, I left these two here for you guys. So yeah, here's a really good example. Uh, do you see that? That's completely carbon fiber that's ripped off because of the uh, uh, the tabs. So I had a tab, I think, on this side, yeah. So when I was pushing it, the tab actually ripped the other way. Um, so it just, you know, you got to play with this stuff until you get it right. You would normally like, you would rather cut it off, but I was just pushing it straight through the carbon because this project took way too long. I mean, I've, I've been here for maybe nine hours doing this and it shouldn't have taken that long, but since it's the first time, 
Uh, There's a lot of things that didn't go so well. Uh, but this is basically the first cut. I didn't cut anything else after this. And it worked out great right out of the box, uh, which is really nice. But I did have to do a shitload and a ton of filing because of the hole sizes. So in the next video, if you guys want to see an in-depth video of just how to prepare a model from, you know, the DXF file for like, you know, the, the, the laser engravers that you can do plywood from because it's really fun. Like I found a clock. I found some other things also that looked really, really cool, but I didn't want to risk it with something too big and it just comes out really awful. So I went with as small as possible and something like this. It's really nice. And by the way, these are supposed to fit flush together, but I just got tired of filing. As you can tell, this is where I was filing. Uh, I really hope I don't spill this. There we go. So I just bring the water and I was filing most of the stuff in here. So that's what I was doing the whole time. Um, took me about maybe an hour or so. Uh, it was really time consuming because of those little tiny holes. And I still wanted to keep it to look somewhat nice so I could show it to you guys. Um, but other than that, it came out really great actually. I'm very satisfied with it. Uh, what I plan on doing next possibly is if I get more models like this and I really like one, what I would do is I would design exactly a PCB exactly this size, two millimeters. We could stick it in and then set up like really tiny RGB LEDs and then somehow route them to back here with a little wire and some stand and they'll just turn like RGB LEDs. It'll just turn on. It'll look really, really nice. Uh, this is real carbon fiber, which is pretty cool. Not a lot of people can say they have one of these in carbon fiber. And um, yeah, if any of my Patreons would like this, first come, first serve. Whoever writes me, I will ship this out to you. Um, just a sign of thanks for all the support because I do need every single piece of help that I could possibly get currently. Uh, right now, I'm still waiting to do a couple more frames from uh, some of my subscribers. Uh, however, I'm unable to do those because I don't have five millimeter or four millimeter or six millimeter carbon fiber. They're a bit too expensive. So I just need some time to get those in. And again, if you could support me on Patreon, that'd be super awesome. If you guys wanna see more content, more in depth tutorials separate other than project videos, let me know down in the comment section. And uh, so far, if you're on a budget, these are actually really great. This is a really great set in my opinion so far. And I guess we're just gonna be using it for the next couple projects as we go along. And if we see any issues, we'll see how long they actually last because I do have recorded because uh, these these go by hours or minutes. You know, some some can work for like one hour straight. Some can work for 30 minutes. It depends on the quality, depends how you're running it. So for the settings I used, I used 70 millimeters per minute plunge rate. And then I also used 140 millimeters per minute is the feed rate, which it goes around. And I used 20,000 RPM. And I've also used um, a 0.4 millimeters uh, every pass. So, you know, it goes down 0.4 millimeters and then it goes down again 0.4 millimeters. So it does that until it goes through. And that gave me a really great result. Last time we could see the threads. I didn't have any threads and it is really soft to the touch, which is really nice. Um, I, I, yeah, it just came out really great. And um, yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think down in the comment section. What do you want to see more of? Um, and well, till next time, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace out.